but I'm going to take my time teaching on the soul because I want every one of my warriors, especially those that are helping us build and that are connecting with me, I want your souls to be totally restored every time you come onto this, onto this broadcast, onto this gathering together. I don't want you to leave saying, I got nothing out of it. Because you'll, you'll forget what I say, what I teach. You'll forget what I do, but you'll never forget the way I made you feel. It's what, that's why it's so important for me, to, for you to understand why you've got to have your soul in, in, in order. Now, you, in order for you to understand all this, you've got to know what the soul is. David spoke to his soul because he knew that if his soul was down or destroyed, if his soul was downcast, the rest of his life would, people with him would be downcast. His acts would be, whatever he did, his act, his, 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 his work would be affected by his soul. So you, you may be saying, well, you've got a spirit as well. Why, why doesn't that just uh, dictate to us? Well, it's trying to dictate to the very thing that controls our whole life. And that's the soul. Okay, so I want that to happen today. I want your soul to be destroyed, restored, excuse me. So let me teach you a little bit about it. Before I do, let me read one scripture to you about the soul. David said, and you've, you've said this probably many times if you are a follower of God. He said, bless the Lord, my soul. In other words, he's talking to his soul. He says, soul, bless the Lord. This is in the, I'm taking it from the original. Soul, bless the Lord. And all that is within me. In other words, aside from the soul, everything else that is surrounding, which I'll teach you today. Bless his holy name. And then he says, soul, bless the Lord. And forget not his benefits. He's telling his soul, you are forgetting what blessing God does for you. So he says, the benefits of God the benefits of having a whole soul if you wish a whole soul a revived restored soul who forgives all of your iniquities you have iniquities today they are forgiven he's telling his soul you're worrying about sin because you've done something okay he forgives all of iniquities so soul, calm down who heals all of your diseases soul calm down the body will be healed, but I need you in, in. I need you to be aligned with what God's speaking right now. Then he goes on to say, "Who redeems your life from destruction? Destruction comes, soul gets down, but God always redeems. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? I pray this every day. Don't forget the benefits of the Lord. He crowns." You with loving kindness and tender mercies. He fills your mouth, feeds you with good things so that your, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, the whole thing there is he's trying to convince his soul because obviously his soul is in trouble. Now, when Saul was out there to kill David, remember the story. When Saul was out there to kill David, David said something, and I've read this to you before I read it again. So you just get it. This is what he said to him. He said, first of all, he glorifies God in a cave while Saul's just outside with thousands of, of soldiers. And he says, my heart is fixed, oh God. Hold on. What did I say? My heart is fixed, oh God. Now, we're going to connect heart and soul. And then we're going to talk about the spirit. And we're going to talk about the, the five different names of your being because this is going to help you and you'll understand why it's important to speak a word in season to those who are weary in other words we get weary we get tired we're in war we may get tired in the battle and that's important that you understand that's the time to to be restored but let's go back he says, my heart is steadfast, my heart is fixed. My soul is steadfast, my soul is fixed. Therefore, I will sing praises. Don't forget for one second, all of you watching me, don't say, well, he didn't understand our burdens that we have today. Don't tell me that. David 
he is be, he's lost his wife. He's lost his position. He's lost his position as the harpister in the, in the house. He's lost his position as the armor bearer to Saul. He is now hated by three quarters of the, of the army and, 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 the, and the nation. Jealous Saul, who is bipolar and who is completely out of his mind, has made up his mind that his one mission in life is to kill David, not the Philistines, not the Amalekites. David, one of his own, tells you something about, about life in the church today. And that's his one goal. David is in a cave. His back is against the wall. Saul, with tens of thousands of men, are just yards away. And David says, I will sing praise. How in the world can he sing praise when he's faced with something you and I would never dream of being faced with? Because his soul was fixed. His soul was whole. I like that. Let's do that song. His soul was whole. Oh yeah. His soul was whole. Give me a whole soul. Come on. Give me a whole soul. Watch what I will do. Give me a whole soul. And watch what I will do. I told you it's going to be you and I tonight. If your soul is steadfast, if your soul is fixed, if your soul is whole and restored, that environment that is trying to dictate fear, unbelief, whatever, cannot survive and cannot exist. Because I'm going to speak to you today about life and existence. Life without existence is not true life and i'll show you what i mean it's very important that you hear this now david says my soul is fixed my soul is whole my soul is steadfast therefore i will sing praise yes i will sing praise and he does it if you have battles if you have bad reports you have illness you have poverty you have banks coming after you listen to me it doesn't matter if your soul is steadfast, your mouth will change the very course of that thing that's coming against you. How? Because David starts to praise him. And you know what happens when you praise God out of a steadfast soul and a steadfast heart? You know what happens? Your environment changes. It does not dictate to you anymore. You dictate to it. And he survived. Now, this is what he says to his soul. In that, in the scripture, we'll find it. Miranda, if, if while you're there, just have a look for that scripture. Somebody look it up. It's in the Psalms. I don't know exactly which one it is. My heart is fixed. I think it's Psalm 30 something, but it's, it's where you'll read that. The, uh, it may say in the Bible, in that, in your Bible, it may say um, when he was confronted by Saul. But let me just quote it to you and we'll get it to you in a few minutes so that you can actually read it yourself. Because most of you are relating to exactly what I'm saying now. David's in the worst position the entire life. His entire life. And he says, my soul is fixed. Thank you, dear. Psalm 57, 7. We got it right there. Psalm 57. Go there quickly. Psalm 57. You could go to it quickly. Well, you don't have to go to it. I'll just read it to you. But you can do it later on if you can do study with it. Psalm 57. What? 57, 7. Yeah, and he's, he's speaking about his soul being amongst lions. I lie among the sons of men who set on fire their teeth, their spears, their tongues. They want to kill him bloodthirsty men and then he says my so there it is my soul is steadfast i will sing praise now listen to this this is so beautiful i will sing and give praise i will i will to do it because my soul is whole he says awake my glory now another one says awake my soul in other words come even to a greater dimension of life in other words in my soul is a glory and David is speaking to his soul in the middle of a crisis and says, Awake my glory because there is a glory in my soul. There is a glory in the soul of America. There is a glory in every soul that we have to awaken, that we've got to speak to. I'm not going to stand in this, in this beautiful nation that God sent to me to and curse it. I will call for the glory of this soul to be restored. Because there is a glory in every soul. Yes, there is. There's a glory in the soul of the grass. 
There's a glory in the soul of the plants and of the flowers. Kim, you've lost your mind. No, I haven't. Everything has a soul. And the highest and most lofty soul is the human soul. Now, we're going to speak about the different aspects of the soul. The soul of the animal. The soul of, the, of nature. But right now, this our na the nation we live in has a soul. You can speak death to it and say you deserve to die. Or you can do what David did and speak to the glory of he, it, which was in his soul. He was literally saying here, awake my glory. The glory that is with me come to life. I prophesy to the United States of America, let your glory come to life. Let me tell you something. God always spoke to the glory of man. When he saw, when Jacob, who was a deceiver and a liar, what did God do? He spoke to Israel. He never spoke to the, the loser Jacob. He spoke to Israel. He brought forth Israel out of Jacob. He wasn't prepared to address the evil of Jacob. He didn't do it in Genesis when he met Jacob on the road. He didn't say to Jacob, you're a liar. You're a deceiver. He said, you're going to be a great blessing to the nations of the earth. I'm going to bless you. He wasn't speaking to Jacob. He was speaking to the Israel inside of Jacob. And I speak to the Israel inside of America. America. I speak to the Israel inside of you. I speak to